Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So continuing the video series of easy statistics up here. So in my last video, as I promised, I'll be covering up all kinds of statistical, I mean almost all kinds of statistical and probability distributions up here. So before we go move into that, uh, I think it's uh, pretty much important that we at least cover some of the terminologies that will be useful in understanding those concepts. So in this video, we are going to cover the basics of mean, median and we'll deep dive into our first distribution. That's the normal distribution. If you haven't already checked out the other videos in this series, I would definitely request you guys to check those out first. Links will be provided in the description as well as in the icon above. So first up, we have the mean and as you know, every other person on this planet would be already aware that mean is another term or another word that is used for average. So mean is nothing but it's an average of a given set of data points and how do we calculate average we just sum up all the observations or all the data points that we have available and then we divide it by the number of data points of the observations that we have looking at the example so here I am generating a sample that's a list of numbers starting from 10 to 100 and then we are taking the mean of it so mean is nothing but the sum of the sample divided by the length of the sample so that's completely it moving on to median uh, so median it's a little bit different from uh, the mean right and uh, in some of the cases mean and median might possess the same value they might give you the same output but actually they the, the meaning that they give right that's that's uh, kind of kind of different up here Achha. so uh, as as described the mean so mean is basically the average of a given set of data points median is the middle value of a list of numbers so now it's not just the middle value of a list of numbers or an array of numbers it's actually the middle value is picked up by sorting that list first and then picking out the middle value now the mi middle value might occur in two forms so if the length or the number of observations that we have in a particular list is odd then the median would be the middle term so for example if we have like 11 elements in a particular list then the median would be the sixth element after sorting the list now what if the number of elements in the list are even then what we do is we just definitely first sort the list and then take the average of fifth and the sixth number in that sorted list and then you have your median so i have put up a simple function up here to calculate median now there might be some you know uh, some differences between the formula and the function that i wrote because python handles the index starting from zero but they possess the same behavior so now taking the previous sample that we already had so the, so the sample that we have declared above for calculating mean is a list of 10 numbers starting from 10 to 100 and for median we are using the same sample and since the number of elements in the sample list is 10 so the median would be calculated by the formula when n is even there's also a really simpler way to calculate median what you can do is you can just import the numpy library and call the numpy dot median method from the numpy library and just pass in the list of the array that we have then you'll get the same result now uh, one question that might occur is if we already have mean then why do we need median i mean that's that's a really good question and the answer to it is even simpler than that so mean is actually prone to outliers some some abrupt values some out of the blue values whereas mean median is not so mean is prone to outliers whereas the median is not so what i mean by outliers is some values that are far away from the reasonable elements that we already have in the data set now uh, to prove that to what extent mean is impacted by the presence of outliers we'll just see another example up here so we are continuing with the previous example so we again have the sample that we declared above so it's a list of 10 numbers starting from 10 to 100 uh, you can see the mean and median in this particular case it's same it's 55 now let's append an outlier to this sample list so now when i append 10,000 to it so you can basically see that all the numbers are ranging from 10 to 100 but this number 10,000 it's uh, kind of an outlier now what happens is when we add this to the original sample list it's going to deviate the mean a lot it's going to impact impact the mean a lot and we can see that from this example or from this code below now the mean and median that were previously 55 have now changed to 960 and 60 respectively now now you can understand why do we actually focus more on median and why there was a need for median even when we already had mean so mean has shifted from 55 to 960 whereas median has all only shifted from 55 to 60 
moving on to variance so variance in simpler terms is nothing but that's a kind of a measurement or the spread of a particular distribution or a set of points that we have available to calculate that the formula is available on the screen you can copy it down if you want to and another term that we have is the standard deviation and standard deviation is nothing but that's the square root of variance that we have defined up here now since we have gone through the basics of mean median standard deviation as well as variance now i think we are ready to learn about normal distribution and why there is an hype over it and why it is very important so normal distribution is again a continuous distribution and the reason that it's so important in statistics is because in our day to day life everything that we see everything that we work with kind of possess the normal distribution behavior if you take an example of age you can take example of height most of the things in real life are influenced and follow the pattern of a normal distribution or a gaussian distribution it's also known as bell curve and the reason for it is the shape of it so as you can see i have generated 1000 random data points from a normal distribution using the numpy dot random rand n that's random normal distribution and i've generated 1000 points up here and then i'm using the seaborn library to plot it and the kind that i'm using it's kde so kde stands for kernel De density estimation and what it does is it kind of smoothens out the histograms that are generated initially with those random points and gives us this beautiful bell curve now all the principles of pdf and cdf that we saw in our previous video hold true for this one and it follows all those properties as well now if we move down a little bit we'll see a term that's called standard normal variate so standard normal variate is nothing but a normal distribution that has the mean zero and the standard deviation as one so that's called a standard normal variate and it it basically follows it also basically follows the 68 95 and 99.7 rule so this rule says that 68% around 68% of the complete data lies around one standard deviation of the mean 95% of the data lies around two standard deviations of the mean and similarly 99% of the data lies around three standard deviations from the mean to understand that better visually we can see the figure so if you look at the data distributed from mu minus sigma to nu plus sigma so that's one standard deviation away from the mean on each of the side and that represents 68% of the total data that we have available similarly the data available or the distribution or the area under this curve available from nu minus 2 sigma to nu plus 2 sigma that's two standard deviations away from the mean represents 95% of the total data similarly it holds the same way for 99% as well now the last concept that we have up here is skewness so skewness basically describes the symmetry of a particular distribution and there are two types of skewness positive skewness and negative skewness now in order to remember them is most of the people on earth are right handed and so you can relate that so positive is related to right and negative is related to left now when we discuss about uh, right skewness or positive skewness that means the distribution has a long tail towards the right end and when we discuss about the negative skewness or left skewed data that means the distribution has a long tail around the left end and similarly you can look at this figure and analyze how mean median and mode are related and change from the standard normal variate when we have some skewness in the distribution so as i mentioned all those concepts that we learned in the previous video about probability density function hold true for this distribution as well and we can use the stats library in order to compute the pdf as well as the cdf values for this one which we'll look into in the next video so make sure you subscribe to this channel and press the bell icon we have that video coming soon as well and i hope you enjoyed this content and we'll see you guys uh, in the next one bye bye